South Carolina is heading to Fayetteville to play Arkansas. Arkansas ranked number 16 this week in the AP. They're favored in this game by 8.5. It started out at 9.5, went down to 8.5, which is interesting to me. I'll tell you why. But for South Carolina, they look shaky when I watched them against Georgia State last week. They didn't necessarily get out of the gate super hot. We took them minus 12.5, and, and against the suits, we won. But I was sweating that thing out for the first two quarters. It took a blocked punt, and it took – the, the floodgate sort of opening for South Carolina to eventually get that number covered. But I was watching this game and I was really worried about Spencer Rattler. I was expecting him to sort of have a revamp. I was expecting him to come out firing at all cylinders and sort of prove to the world that he is still that guy that we thought he was last year in the preseason and to throw two interceptions. That's why he lost his job at Oklahoma. So I was discouraged to see that. Again, it's week one, so we're not making any definitive overarching statements. But in that one sample size, I was disappointed, hoping he can get it back on track. Probably even more important for South Carolina, only 73 yards rushing against Georgia State. Georgia State is a good football team. They will maybe not win. I'm not going to say they're going to win the conference. They're going to contend for that conference, if not win it. But when it comes to what you should do at South Carolina against that kind of competition, you should run for more than 73 yards. And Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina, that's a point of emphasis for him. He wants to be able to go under center, turn around and hand the ball to whoever it is back there. I mean, pick your poison, whether it's Christian Beal Smith or Lloyd. I mean, you, you got some guys to hand the ball to. Christian Beal Smith is expected to go in this game. I know he's a little bit banged up, but... You should be able to force the issue at South Carolina against Georgia State. So all that's to be said, against Arkansas, it's not getting any easier. It is not going to get any easier. That front seven is not going to look like Georgia State's front seven. It's going to be some big, fast, physical human beings. Drew Sanders being one of them. Bumper Pool being another one of them. That front seven for Arkansas is going to give you issues. So for South Carolina, if you're going to win this game, you have to be able to be versatile on offense. You can't just ask Spencer Rattler to be Superman, which has been a quote we've taken from SEC Media Day and Shane Beamer and ran with it. We 1,000% agree with that. They don't want him to have to be Superman, and we don't think he needs to be Superman for South Carolina to be as effective as they ultimately want to be. And so for South Carolina, can you establish something on the ground? That 73 yards a week ago, it's not going to cut it. Can you get something on the ground to take something off of Spencer Rattler's plate? Because if you're asking him to go win the game for you, I think you have problems. I think you're going to have issues. And then in terms of stopping the run, can you stop K.J. Jefferson and the big boys up front for Arkansas? Can you hold your water? Can you hold your water? That's going to be crucial, something to see. As it always does with Arkansas, they make you play in the trenches. Does South Carolina have the juice to be competitive in the trenches to be able to throw the ball off that offensively? And then can they get to a, a difficult third down for Arkansas when they're playing defense? That's going to be crucial. Going to be absolutely crucial to the outcome of this game. Looking to Arkansas, kind of to talk about the other side of that coin, I think they're going to be able to run the ball well. Ran for 200 last week against Cincinnati, and Cincinnati is no slouch of a program. Lost a lot to the NFL, but Arkansas just kind of had their way. Six minutes left in the game, they don't give the ball back. Just imposed their will on Cincinnati. And Sam Pittman, after the game, was kind of saying, hey, we didn't really run the ball as well as we thought we wanted to. And he looks at his stat sheet and says, ran for 200 yards. I guess we ran it okay, but you could tell he still wasn't thrilled with the way they ran the football in that game, which if I'm South Carolina and I'm going to be on the receiving end of that this week, I'm saying, oh boy, okay, buckle up your chin straps, boys. We're going to have to go play a physical four quarters of ball against this Razorbacks team. So I think they're going to be able to run the ball well, whether it's 200 yards or not. I don't know if it matters. They're going to be able to run the ball well, in my opinion. Off of that, though, when South Carolina is saying, hey, all right, we're going to commit seven in the box, or excuse me, eight in the box. We're going to commit extra bodies to the run game. We, we just have to. Arkansas, you've made it clear you're going to run the ball. We're going to make it clear we're going to commit guys to try and match up with you. When that happens, do they have the explosiveness to make them pay? 
Do they have the burners on the outside to make them pay? Because a year ago, it was Traylon Burks, and we've talked about this with Arkansas at length on this program. Do they have somebody that can say, all right, you're going to have one safety deep? That's too bad, because here we go. Play action, KJ Jefferson going deep too. Who is it? Is it Jaden Hazelwood? Does Trey Knox go back to his wide receiver days and go deep? I mean, there's got to be somebody to take the top off this defense. Because that's the ultimate counterpunch to being able to just continue to pound the rock at Arkansas. That's going to be a big deal. However, in the secondary, Arkansas is a little bit beat up. Ben Bryan and co. last week threw for about 300 yards on old Arkansas. Secondary is kind of dinged up right now. And for all the shortcomings we feel like Spencer Rattler has on this program, we still have never questioned his ability. Question his decision-making at times, but his ability, no. Dude's got an arm. Dude can make every throw when he's on. So if Arkansas is going to have a similar performance they did last week, does Spencer Rattler kind of catch his rhythm? If Spencer Rattler gets into rhythm, does that change the game? Because you got some weapons. You got Jaheim Bell. You got Dak Joyner if you're South Carolina. You got to be able to play sound in the secondary for Arkansas. Because, again, if they get going passing the football, And they discover, hey, the run game's not working. Again, 73 yards last week against Georgia State. Run game's not going to work. Okay, we'll evolve. We'll adapt. We'll attack you where we think you're weak. That can't be the case for Arkansas. Because if that happens, I think the game becomes a tempo that's a little more pushed than Arkansas would like. So our prediction for this game, ultimately, South Carolina's line of scrimmage just gives me too much pause. I keep going back to the stat, 73 yards on the ground against Georgia State. Is this going to be how South Carolina is the rest of the year? I'm not ready to say that. But from game one to game two, they need a vast improvement. So if I'm picking this game based on the strength of Arkansas, it's line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage for Arkansas is their bread and butter. That's their formula. That's what works for them. As a whole, the matchup-wise just favors Arkansas. At the end of the day, the matchups, the bodies, the big human beings up front favors Arkansas. So we like Arkansas to win. We like Arkansas to cover. This will come back later in the show, but we think Arkansas wins this game 34-21 in Fayetteville. Sam Hartman gets himself, excuse me, Sam Hartman. Sam Hartman, too, honestly. He's going to be back for Wake Forest. Uh, Sam Pittman gets himself another cold beer. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.